What's up everybody? Thanks for watching today. So I haven't made an update for a while, but I just wanted to make a kind of a different video. Um, I noticed that we shot over 500 subscribers real fast and it's already up to like 540 or something like that. So um, I'm not sure where the huge change in subscribers came from out of nowhere, but thank you all for joining this journey. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys can relate to any of these videos or maybe you know somebody struggling with addiction or Suboxone, feel free to send them my video um, or a link to my channel. Uh, possibly they can find some, side, some sort of value. I have a lot of videos talking about Suboxone and quite a few talking about opiate addiction as well. So thank you guys for joining. Um, so today's video, I wanted to kind of talk about my two year stretch, stretch of sobriety from being addicted to painkillers, opiates. Um, I never tried heroin, thank God. Um, but I was stuck in active addiction for the better part of about 15 years, guys. And it all started with a motorcycle accident when I was 21 years old and just kind of slowly progressed. I mean, it wasn't horrible right off the bat. It was manageable for probably the first few years, maybe three to five years. I kept it really low. I didn't really consider it an, an addiction until somewhere probably after five years of taking it. I started taking it more and more and more and then it became daily. So at the worst of my opiate addiction, I was using around 100 to 200 milligrams of painkillers per day on on a pretty base pretty constant basis and my apologies for this video it's going to be all over the place just bear with me so <clears throat> um how i was able how was i able to manage two years um clean from opiates painkillers getting high um I would say, um, I wrote down a few things. So, and I just wanna say before I give you the, this information that this is not the only way to do it. This is just what worked for me personally. And this is after many failed attempts at trying to wean myself off or taper down with painkillers. That failed time and time again. I went through numerous withdrawals, even when I didn't even know that was such a thing. I was going through lots of withdrawals. Um, and then once I kind of found Suboxone probably five years ago, I would say that's when I kind of realized that I could help myself through the withdrawal process or bypass it, I guess you want to call it. <laughs> All right. So the first things first is you have to want it. How bad do you want it, guys? That's probably one of the biggest things. If you don't even accept the fact that you're addicted or you're an addict, if you can't get to that point, then it's gonna be really hard for you to overcome um, the challenge because it is a major challenge, <laughs> as all of you guys know that are watching this. So you have to really be sick of the lifestyle. Chances are you've lost a bunch of friends to some type of drug or opiate or heroin. Um, I know me personally, I've lost well over 10 friends to drugs. Um, <clears throat> and that's not even counting all the people that are still active addicts that I know today. And then alcohol, that's a whole other story. I would say about half the people that I know are addicted to alcohol. Very sad stuff. So addiction is no small matter. <laughs> so you really have to want to be clean. You have to be sick of the lifestyle, sick of worrying about getting in trouble or getting in trouble sick of spending all your money on drugs you really have to be sick of this lifestyle to want to make a change something has to um, have happened maybe you got in an accident maybe you killed somebody in the accident it has to be something drastic or you really have to want it for whatever the reason is maybe you have a newborn on, on the way maybe you just had a kid i don't know something whatever you need to find you need to find something that really wants you to do it. You can't do it for somebody else just because somebody else wants you to get clean. I, I rarely have seen that work. It has to be the person that really wants to get off. 
All right, so the next thing is I opened my car dealership um, two, three years ago, somewhere around there. I get the timelines a little bit messed up. And I got in an accident like a month into the business. And then that sent me, that injured my back. Doctors started giving me painkillers again, again, and it kicked off my addiction again. And just me knowing um, kind of the road that that would lead to, um, I took a huge L and I closed that business that I had just opened. And it cost me several, several thousands of dollars hundreds of hours of wasted time that it took me to put that business together all because I knew that that business was on, it was on a train, it was on a train wreck just waiting to happen. So I wanted to close the business down before that train wreck did happen because I had seen other people fail at their businesses because addiction was involved. So I just, I just knew in my heart that I had to fix my addiction um, to painkillers before I could proceed and be successful in business. Plus, I wanted to feel the success. You know, I didn't want, I remember um, when I would, I sold a car and I was on pain medication. It just didn't have the same feeling like you earned it. You know, I don't know. It's a different feeling um, of success while you're high on opiates. It's not, it's not, it's not the way I want to feel about success. I want to feel clean and sober and like I really earned it. Okay, so I closed my business. The next thing I did uh, was I, uh, I found a Suboxone doctor and a counselor in the same clinic, I guess you want to call it. Um, and that was a huge turning point for me uh, because I was no longer having to uh, worry about getting the Suboxone off the streets illegally. Um, I, I remember that I was paying way too much money for Suboxone and I was abusing it, meaning that I was taking um, more than I needed. I was taking it, trying to get a little bit of the high. I mean, it's, not, it's nothing like the high of painkillers for me in my experience, but it does still get you a little bit of a buzz. But for me, I was looking at it as, hey, this is a lesser evil. Um, it's much less money. I mean, ten. I mean, like ten times cheaper than taking painkillers by by about. A, that's probably a pretty accurate guess. Um, so I was finding that my dealer or friend or whoever it was would constantly be unable to get Suboxone. So then I would be, I would be stressing. You know, trying to save as much of it as I can and then kind of forced to do like a rapid taper. It was just nightmare. It was a nightmare on Elm Street trying to um, maintain Suboxone and tapering and all that stuff with an un, uh, with a supply that you're not really sure if it's going to be there very long. So once I got the sub doctor, I had my steady medication that, that allowed me to get a steady base formed. They were drug testing me, so that was also a huge motivator because I didn't want to go in there looking like a jackass, filling drug tests. Um, I never failed one drug test um, ever since I went to the Suboxone doctor. So that that was also a big piece of it because I, I didn't want to look like a failure to everybody in the office because you kind of know that they all know what's going on. And if you fail, I guarantee they're going to be like, mm, talking about it. <laughs> You know, it's probably illegal. So the counseling really helped. And uh, they call it the MAT program, Medication Assisted Treatment, I believe it stands for. So I, I do believe in that. Um, if you can find, the, find people with good reviews, that's probably what I would recommend. Make sure that other people have had good experiences with them. Don't just go picking the first, first person you see in the phone book. So... All right, moving on. So I left a toxic relationship that I could I could not get out of. Um, it was with my ex ex girlfriend. We had a highly addictive. Um, it was like a makeup breakup relationship. Uh, we I feel like we were kind of addicted to that makeup sex type of thing. That's that might be too much information, but I know that that kind of sexual experience can be addicting. So 
Um, to a certain point, I feel like her and I's relationship, I mean, it was pretty much built on drama right from the start. So that's where that was headed. And we just couldn't really let each other go for whatever reason. We were, we were addicted to each other in a really bad way. Um, so I finally was able to kind of like put that fire out, but you know, chances are that I probably would have went back to her again at some point, just because I, I wasn't really interested in anybody else in the area that I'm in. I kind of feel like I already know anybody that I would potentially be interested in. But then shortly after that, I did meet somebody um, that wasn't even from this area really. And that person was very inspiring to me. And it was kind of like the finishing touch that it was like, okay, wow, I can actually like somebody else and I can have an attraction towards somebody else. And so as soon as I started taking the other person more seriously, um, I, did, I never even looked back at that toxic relationship because I knew that that was a chapter that had needed to be closed um, for the sake of my life and also for the sake of her life because it was just very toxic. We were just constantly butting heads. And I think it's just the kind of people that we both are that time in our lives, just all that stuff combined. And it just was a horrible situation. So I closed that down. I met somebody new, I would say like shortly after, and she inspired me to want to be better on a lot of different levels in my life. And so that really helped. So as you can see, it's not really just one thing. It's multiple things kind of all coming together to help push me to keep me sober you know i remember thinking a lot of times for her i don't want to fall i don't want to fall back into addiction because i know that i know the damage that that will cause on the relationship um because i have been in relationships while i was in addiction and it did make things much more challenging for the relationship so i didn't want to jeopardize that so that was just another layer of security for me. Just wanted to be the best that I could for her and for us. Okay, and then um, another thing after that is I moved out of the state that I was in. So really that made a huge difference as far as my availability to get the drug. Um, I moved to a place where I didn't know anybody. Um, the place actually was Idaho. Uh, for those of you that do not know, and near Boise, Idaho. So I really, really love that area. If you guys, if any of you guys are considering a place to maybe move out of the state for a year or two while well, you try to get your life back together and your sobriety together, I, I visited a lot of places over the years, and that is the only place that felt like home to me. It felt like home more than my home that I'm in now and that I've been in. Um, everybody's so kind there. Everything's, there are certain areas of course that are nicer, but there's so many nice new things in the Meridian area, which is right next to Boise. Check out Meridian, I highly suggest that city. Boise is kind of more like an old school downtown college vibe. Meridian is like the new, you know, everything's so new and nice there and, and I love that kind of stuff. So check that place out. Um, I highly suggest uh, the geological change if you're able to do that. If you've tried everything else and nothing else is working and you just keep running into all your old friends that use and it just keeps reigniting your, um, keeps reigniting your thoughts of using and maybe you start hanging out with an old friend, you know it's only a matter of time before you guys talk about the drug and then before you know it, you're gonna go pick it up. Maybe you had a bad day. It's just too easy to fall back into that trap. So if you're out of that state, it's it literally didn't even cross my mind. Maybe, I don't even think once in the entire year that I was gone, taking drugs didn't even cross my mind. It wasn't an option. If it's not an option, it's not really gonna cross your mind. That was my thought. <clears throat> All right, so. And she moved with me to that state. Um, so that was also nice to kind of just try a different life in a different state where nobody knew who I was. 
I didn't have to constantly worry about running into certain people. It was really a, a breath of fresh air and um, it made me coming down off Suboxone. As you guys seen, I feel like it made that process easier. That process really isn't terribly easy to begin with. So at that point, I'm just thinking any little bit helps. Plus I wasn't working uh, in that state. So I had a lot of free time, which I feel like that that was something that would probably change is I would want to be working as I'm trying to go through a taper. Um, sitting around bored all the time, that is a huge hard, that makes things a lot harder. So if you guys can keep yourselves busy, keep yourselves working, and especially if you can be motivated by your job and do something that you love, um, that's a really big thing. If you hate your job every day, that's gonna make things really challenging. So when I moved back, I moved back to start my business again. Um, <clears throat> I did get, shortly after I got back to back to my sub doctor, I got back on Suboxone, I was depressed. Um, I was struggling with business. It was new business again, you know, um, and then also kind of like trying to decide on if I was gonna finish up that relationship with that woman or not there was just a lot of confusion in my life and combine that with the stress of the new business I did get depressed and um, but yeah I felt like I found my way out of that season of depression I feel like a lot of my life has pretty long seasons of depression um, but even as of today and right now this video I am still taking Suboxone. I did get back on Suboxone to help with my depression, uh, but I am still being drug tested. I still see my counselor and my doctor, and we are working at getting off Suboxone again. So um, I don't wanna to talk too much about um, where I'm at with the taper and stuff in this video. I'll make a separate video for that. So I started my business, okay? I started my business about six months ago and it has been a lot different this time um, than it was last time. I'm making sure that I'm not burning myself out this time, which I did last time. I really burned myself out right from the very first month, man. I was working way too much. I mean, it definitely paid, paid me and rewarded me for sure. And um, I'm not so concerned with making a million dollars right off the bat <laughs> this time around. I'm more focused on slow and steady growth. I'm not focused on work, work, work all day long. I'm, I'm more focused about keeping my head on straight, making sure that I'm okay up here, uh, making sure that my physical, and my fitness is good. That is very important to me. That's probably, probably at least as important to me, probably more important. My fitness is more important to me than my business. I would have to, to be honest with you. <laughs> Um, so eating healthy food, working out, um, I get depressed if I stop working out for more than two days, I'm that addicted to the gym. I just love it. It feels so good to me and I wish and I hope that all of you can experience that something similar with physical fitness. It is, I've always said it and I'm sure you guys are sick of me saying it, but it is one of the best thing that has ever happened to me in my life is going down the journey of health and fitness. So if you don't lift weights, especially you fellas, get your ass in the gym. <laughs> I put on over 100 pounds of muscle. I was 130 pounds, and my highest I was at up to 237 pounds. Right now I'm at about 220, so love that fitness life. So I'm about to wrap up the video. We are getting close here, but me starting my business is a huge positive motivation for me. I know that if I relapse at this point, I will shut down the business again. I'm not, I'm not gonna go down that long bumpy road of mixing business with drug addiction, um, illegal drug addiction on top of that, where it's just a matter of time before something gives and you really mess something up with your life. I'm not gonna go down that road. Um, things can always change. As we all know, life is always full of ups and downs. Things change, people minds change, everything changes. So I just wanna let you guys know that I've made it two years off of painkillers after a long addiction and you guys can too. So thanks for watching guys, have a great day.